Uh, hi, my name is Stephen Young. I'm going to present my final projects for under actuated robotics at MIT. And uh, my final project topic is collision free trajectory planning and tracking of a clock copter. The problem formulation is set up as below. Uh, I want to throw a quad copter in a in familiar environment, and then I want to control, I want to generate the trajectory and optimize that trajectory so that uh, the quad rotor can get from the initial state to the final state. Uh, without loss of generalization, I formed the map on the left, uh, where on the, uh, the black colored uh, pieces are the the obstacles, and I want to move the move the quadcopter from the initial state here to the goal state on the top right without a collision with any of these obstacles. So over here, I used a two D quadcopter model, but it could be easily gener generalized into a three D scenario. So I broke down the problem into three subtasks. The first subtask is to identify the safety zones. Uh, to do that, I first uh, inflate the obstacles by a certain amount of distance. This distance represents a safety distance uh, such that uh, when the center of mass is not in these regions, this means that the, the, the rotors on the left or right side of the frame are not in collision with the obstacles. So this is a, kind of a workaround to uh, to implement an optimization algorithm in the in the optimization uh, stage of the final project, uh, uh, but there's a trade-off for this. Uh, simply inflation inflating the boundary of the obstacle is that when the obstacles are in curved shape, for example, if they are a circle, uh, then the inflation uh, would be rather complicated. Uh, 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 for more complicated geometry, such as an oval, it will be uh, more messy. Uh, but in this case, uh, more general, generalized uh, case is that we have these vertices and these polygon shaped obstacles so that boundaries can be inflated quite easily. So now, uh, see on the right are the inflated obstacles. You can see the channels are a lot narrower and the problem is more interesting. So uh, how do you identify, how to let the quadcopter know which uh, safety, uh, what, what area are the safety areas? Uh, so to do that, I use uh, an algorithm called uh, IRIS. It is a, uh, it is a, uh, an algorithm to form large convex regions uh, given the obstacles uh, with semi, semi definite programming. So basically you put a seed point, as shown on the right, basically what you did is you put a seed point uh, anywhere, and then uh, the region would inflate around that seed point so that uh, it, gets, it, it gets to its largest surface area without collision, of the, without containing any obstacle, and at the same time without breaking its convexity. So I put my seed first at the goal point and at the seat point and at the initial point. So these two green regions are the generated are the first two generated iris regions. So what I do next is that I developed a, a simple mechanism such that uh, I am able to put seed randomly uh, at the at the free space such that I can generate a certain amount of iris regions. That are free of uh, that are free of obstacles. So what the, what these Irish regions will tell me is that they'll give me the half space representation of each of these regions, such that uh, I know if uh, uh, it'll give me the a matrix a b and a b vector, and then if I uh, if I multiply the a matrix with the position at a certain point. Uh, and then uh, sum that up with a b vector. It should be a, it should be smaller than zero. If it is smaller than zero, it means that my point is within a certain iris region. So on the right uh, are the labeled uh, iris regions based on the sequence they are generated. 
So this is the first subtask that is to identify the safety zones. And the second sub subtask is to optimize the trajectory. Uh, basically, uh, what I want to do here is I want to optimize uh, the trajectory from uh, the, the initial state to the goal state. And then uh, what had been previously proposed by Robert Day and Professor Russ is a mixed integer uh, problem formulation such that, uh, such that uh, the, uh, within the optimization formulation, it already takes care of assigning uh, which piece of the trajectory would be in which section. So that will also be an optimizable variable. Uh, but for my problem, due to some local issues, I'm not able to uh, solve a mixed integer problem on my local machine. So I relaxed it and form it in a more quadratic programming manner. So what I do here is that uh, the ultimate goal is to minimize the jerk, which is beneficial for the trajectory of uh, a quad copter. And uh, so basically I assign the trajectory to be uh, an arbitrary number of polynomial pieces. And in my implementation, I uh, specify then those polynomial pieces to be third order. And I specify there that there should be five, uh, five polynomial pieces to get from region zero to region one and to get from region zero, uh, to get from initial state to the goal state. Uh, there should be five, five third order polynomial pieces. Uh, but this is quite arbitrary. So uh, one thing that could be worked on is to assign them automatically or, uh, to, uh, to, to, or another way is to think of, is there any, can we specify the number of polynomial pieces also as an opti optimizable variable. So, but after all, here, here what I do here uh, uh, to get around with the mixed integer problem, what I do here is that I kind of developed a search tree algorithm such that I, I know uh, what will be the shortest path from, the, from, the, from region zero to region one. Um, so what I do here is that I assign, uh, so I first identify which uh, regions are in neighbor with each other. For example, region five, four, and zero are the neighbors of region two, and region three and four are the, region, uh, are the neighbors of region one. And then based on, the, based on this uh, neighbor information, I am able to find the shortest path, path from uh, region zero to region one. Of course, the shortest path is uh, is like in terms of the numbers of regions to be crossed. For example, if I go from region zero to region two to four to one, this will be shorter than going from region zero to two to four to three and then to one. Uh, so after this round of uh, uh, sorting, I can get rid of certain regions uh, that is uh, not in use. For example, region five here, it, it, it leads to a dead end. So it, it will be obsolete. On the other hand, region three there, it is unnecessary to cross through region three. I can directly cross from region four to region five, uh, to region one. So, so on the right is, our, is my output after this step. So now uh, what I do here is I assign there that, remember that there are five polynomial pieces. But for this, I kind of arbitrarily assign that uh, Polynomial one will be in region zero. Polynomial two, uh, polynomial uh, two will be in region two. Polynomial three, four will be in region four, and the polynomial five will be in region one. So this is quite arbitrary, but uh, so this is also the uh, what the mixed integer formulation would have uh, tried to solve. That is to assign these uh, polynomial pieces to the regions automatically. But here I have to do it manually because I want to solve it with a stop solver. So here is our output. Uh, so uh, despite, despite uh, here are two examples with different initial state. Uh, so previously I specified the initial initials, uh, position and the goal position, but uh, there are therefore other state variables that, that I can assign. That is the velocity, the two velocity variables, 
and the two acceleration x and y. So on the left or right are just two uh, different initial states. Uh, they both go from uh, very, very, they go both go from the initial position to the to the uh, goal position with a very smooth and natural uh, trajectory. Uh, the continuation constraints are in, in pulse, as we can see here, uh, at the joints of the polynomials it is a very smooth transition. Uh, the polynomials uh, just look like one whole polynomial. Of course, this is because the geometry is rather simple, as the stomp solver just find a way to go through directly to the goal state. If it is more, if it is a more complicated obstacle arrangement, uh, we should expect to see uh, more curved polynomials, as it is a third order. Now it just looks like a parabolic uh, trajectory. And on the other hand, I can see that. Uh, the trajectory are collision free as none of them step in the step uh, trespass the safety distance so this is it for the trajectory optimization part uh, the third part is to execute the trajectory such that uh, uh, such that the quad rotor is able to follow that trajectory so for this i implemented an iterative lqr uh, for my implementation it looks uh, 50 st uh, time steps ahead and then it wants to get the opti optimal solution to arrive uh, to follow this trajectory within 50 time steps. And on the right, you can see here, uh, the, the orange one is actually the executed curve. And down below is the generated curve that is output from the optimal uh, trajectory optimization stage. And we can see that these uh, two tra trajectories almost lie on top of each other. This is because the ILQR is very effective. And as long as the, the initial state that we give the ILQR is the same as the initial state that we give uh, the stomp solver, the optimization solver, uh, the ILQR is able to um, solve the problem, control the quad rotor very well. And we can see here, again, uh, we account for the length, the length of the frame of the quad rotor is Still within, well, within uh, the safe safety distance away from the obstacles, and it is able to uh, go from the initial state to the goal state very smoothly. And then, just to test the robustness of the ILQR, uh, I tested some other initial conditions. However, these are not supposed to happen because the initial conditions that we feed into the ILQR should be the same one that we that is fed into the optimization problem. So, if the initial uh, has, if the initial state is different, like the one shown in the left or middle, then the the generated trajectory should be different in the first place. But this is just to test the robustness of the ILQR, and we can see here that uh, the ILQR works very fairly well uh, after transient the the quad the quadcopter's trajectory converges to the uh, to the desired trajectory very very quickly and stays on the trajectory onwards. So this is it for my final project. Uh, I put uh, so the big topic is that I want to put a quadcopter in an unfamiliar environment and let let it uh, pass through that environment. And for here, I first. I use iris to identify this and represent the safety region. And then I implemented a quadratic program in optimization such that uh, uh, it minimized jerk and it avoids the obstacles. And then it, uh, and then it, also, uh, it also satisfies certain conditions within the constraints of the quadratic program. And it is able to generate a fairly well, a fair, fairly smooth, natural trajectory for the quad rotor to follow. And uh, in the end, after the trajectory is optimized, I implemented the ILQR sort of uh, in a model predictive controller manner. And uh, it is able to execute the trajectory very well. So for the future, I think. Uh, could be there's something could be done is 
uh, again for the for the quadratic programming and formulation uh, the urgent work proposed by Robert Dade and uh, uh, Professor Ross the mixed integer programming uh, formulation I think is more more uh, more advanced than the one that I implemented here so I would refer to that if anyone wants to work on similar problem. On the other hand, um, maybe the uh, maybe the trajectory optimization part can also be run in real time, such that maybe after 50 steps, it start uh, like it, it, it rec uh, the quad rotor itself recognize the map again. Like the the map is not static, but it is dynamically being updated. I think it will be a, an interesting topic as well. On the other hand, there is something that is quite ideal here. For example, the thrust of the rotors, I didn't limit them. Uh, so that could also be something that is more, uh, that should be included in the trajectory and the trajectory optimization uh, stage. So this is my conclusion. And please contact me if you're interested in anything or if you find anything confusing to you. Thank you.